interstellar space. We are very far from our sun. It's difficult to differentiate between the large number of stars. Billions. They have planets and moons like our sun. The distances are so great that if we travel at the speed of light, it will take years to reach our next destination. The number of miles is incomprehensible. We have to use another measure, light years. The distance that light travels in a year, 5.88 trillion miles. With so many options, it's hard to decide where to go. Let's start with something close. Its light takes four years to reach us. We have to travel a little faster. Alpha Centauri. They are so close together that from afar they look like one single star. Actually, this is a system of three stars. The third, Proxima Centauri, is quite far from these two. Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. Two stars similar to our Sun. They travel through space, orbiting one around the other. Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf, contains only about one-eighth the mass of our Sun. This planet orbits it. Proxima b is a little bigger than Earth. Maybe it has life. Kepler 452, a star similar to our Sun. Has several planets. This one is similar to Earth in size and is in the habitable zone, where it's neither too hot nor too cold. Life could exist. What it would be like? It's hard to imagine. We've come a long way. We are 1400 light years from Earth. There are several interesting things that we left behind.
the Seven Sisters Star Cluster. It's a feature in our night sky. At 410 light years, it's clearly seen from Earth. It has captivated many minds throughout history. It originated a Greek legend, the Pleiades. They are the seven daughters of the titan god Atlas and the sea nymph Pleon. During an ancient war, Atlas rebelled against Zeus, the king of the gods, who sentenced his enemy to forever hold the heavens on his shoulders. The sisters were so sad that Zeus allowed them a place in heaven to be close to their father. The Pleiades are an example of an open star cluster, a group of stars that were born almost at the same time from a gigantic cloud of gas and dust. The titanic star Betelgeuse is incredibly huge. Our sun is 109 times bigger than Earth. That's pretty big. But it's nothing compared to this gigantic star. 950 times bigger than our sun. A red supergiant is in its final stage, about to explode. It will be a huge supernova. cosmic work of art, composed of a star that was once like our sun. Now a dying star lies in the center.
When it finished burning its fuel, the ancient star ejected its gaseous outer layers, leaving behind a tiny hot dense core called a white dwarf. The star's dusty outer layers crumble into space, glowing in the intense ultraviolet radiation ejected from the hot stellar core. the Orion Nebula, a huge cloud of gas and dust in space, 12 light years across, formed by supernova explosions. Many stars are forming here. The turbulence deep within these clouds gives rise to knots with enough mass that the gas and dust can begin to collapse under their own gravitational pull, forming stars. It is sculpted by stellar winds, ejected by young stars that emit powerful ultraviolet light. the most famous supernova remnant, the Crab Nebula. When a star meets its end, in violent fiery death, it spews its insides out into space, creating an expanding wave of gas and dust, known as a supernova nebula. It's so dense that a teaspoon of material from that star will weigh 4 billion tons. At its center is a pulsar, a neutron star. It spins very fast, 
once every 33 milliseconds, shooting out beams of radio waves and visible light that spin like a beacon in space. The nebula stretches 10 light years across and continues to expand, more than twice the distance from Earth to Alpha Centauri. This nebula looks like a bubble seven light years across. The sitting star that is forming it is 45 times more massive than our Sun. The star's gas heats up so much that it escapes into space as a stellar wind forming the outer edge, giving it the appearance of a bubble. An asymmetry between the gas causes it to be off-center. What spectacular views the cosmos offers us, each one looking like a natural work of art. the Pillars of Creation. This name is due to the fact that it's an active region of star formation. Within the nebula, there are hundreds of newborn stars. If we see it with infrared light, we can distinguish them. A group of young stars bathe the nebula in ultraviolet light, showing us its details. Their winds slowly erode the huge clouds of gas and dust. What could be our next destination? Our galaxy is very big. We could spend our lives looking at every interesting object.
There is a distortion in the light. What could it be? A black hole. One of the strangest and most fascinating objects in space. They are extremely dense and have such a strong gravitational pull that not even light can escape their grasp if it gets close enough. A place where gravity exists in its most intense and overwhelming form. They are born when a sufficiently massive star reaches its end. This one wanders alone in space, practically invisible since there is no material falling on it. Its immense gravity distorts the light around it. Now let's go to the center of our galaxy, a realm of unparalleled intensity and intrigue. There is a dense cluster of stars in the center. If we speed up time, we can see that they are orbiting something. a supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, four million times more massive than our sun. A large amount of super hot material orbits it at speeds closer to the speed of light, the accretion disk. The surrounding region is a cosmic tornado. The extreme deformation of space-time around us plays with our vision. Extreme gravity bends the path of light emitted behind the black hole and makes it appear as if the accretion disk is also on top.
In real life, we could not reach many of the destinations we want to visit, due to a phenomenon known as dark energy, that moves bodies away from the universe in such a way that they become practically impossible to reach. Those bodies get further and further away, making the observable universe smaller and smaller. All this time, we have been breaking the rules of physics and the limits of space-time to reach our destinations. Now, we will travel so far that some places will be totally different if we travel to them instantly. The light we have seen from Earth from our next destinations is millions of years old. To make things less complicated, now we'll not only travel great distances, we'll also travel back in time. In this way, at some point, we'll arrive at the beginning of everything. Our galaxy is full of interesting things. We have seen only a few. We could spend forever exploring. Billions of stars. Billions of planets. But we have to go on with our journey. We have to go further. Into intergalactic space. <laughs> 